Hey there, what's up gang? Kawhi Five O here with a video designed for 2023. That video, of course, being some of the best servants to summon for in 2023. We're just doing the five stars on this video. Don't worry, lower rarity characters are not excluded. They will be getting their own video later. And this, uh, this was tough because there's a lot of good stuff coming out this year. People who have been looking forward to JP, you know, you know that this year is going to be a rough one when it comes to getting servants. Now, I capped this list at five and uh, we're just going to go down the list as standard and talk about who is the best. Now, listen, a couple of things. One, this is entirely decided upon by their mechanics. There are characters I like on this, but their personalities were not taken into consideration. This was entirely on how useful they will be in your team, be you a veteran or a new FGO player. Also a thing I feel like I shouldn't have to mention, but I gotta mention it anyways. There are spoilers in this. I mean, I don't know why you popped into a video of characters that are coming out this year and expected not to get spoiled but I guess the inner machinations of your mind are just an enigma. What can I do? You're operating at a higher level than I am, maybe. I don't I don't know. Anyways, with those warnings out of the way, let's go ahead and start the list. Uh, like and subscribe if a servant you like is on this list, which means all of you should, because I know there's a servant on here that everyone basically universally loves. Anyways, let's get started. Number five. Tai Gong Wong. My gosh. I was absolutely surprised when he initially came out on JP at the end of the year, but this man is incredible. One of, if not the best rider in the entire game. There, I said it. But what does Zhang Jia offer us in terms of abilities? Well, his first skill is a party-wide quick attack and noble phantasm damage buff. His second skill is a enemy-wide skill seal that increases his damage against divine and demonic enemies. And that third skill, party-wide NP charge as well as an NP charge for himself as well. That's right, Quick is kind of, sort of, maybe back, baby. But he is really, really dang good. His Noble Phantasm is also an AoE Quick Noble Phantasm that deals extra damage to divine enemies, reducing their quick resistance for three turns. Which means if you're able to use this in waves on a challenge quest, well, the enemy is going to take more and more damage from Zhang Jia's Quick cards. I absolutely love, love this guy in terms of aesthetics and his personality and it really made me feel good when I finally got to take a look at his kit and saw he was a really dang good quick servant. Uh, some people might be thinking, eh, he's a quick servant, we've got other stuff coming down the pipeline. Well, that's why, that's why he's number five. That's why he is number five. Despite the fact that he is a quick servant, he is still very, very strong. All right, let's move on to number four. Melusine, Melusine, Melusine. Another example of one of the best examples in her class getting added this year. And the main reason people are hyped about Melusine isn't just the fact that her art is really, really good, or that she's from one of the most anticipated story chapters in the game period. Part of it's because of her noble phantasm. Melusine has the ability to either use a single target arts noble phantasm or an AOE Buster Noble Phantasm. That's right, she has two separate Noble Phantasms, so you can easily bring her on challenge quests or farming, and she will be able to fit the role quite, quite well. 
Melusine is incredibly versatile, and she's also got quite a few super powerful skills in her arsenal as well. She's got an attack boost with an NP boost that also increases her max HP, sort of a little mini Merlin buff. She of course has the ability to increase her critical star absorption, which is an ability I like to see on my Lancers. That is something I wish more Lancers have. Luckily, Melusine carries that. She also has the ability to give herself a solid NP damage boost with invincibility, or if she happens to be in her second ascension, well, she will change to her third ascension. This works on first ascension as well, by the way, and charge her Noble Phantasm gauge from 50 to 100%. That's right, an instant on-demand Noble Phantasm if you're keeping her in a lower ascension. This versatility is what made Melusine a shoe-in on this list but you might be surprised that a servant with the ability to change their noble phantasm type is only number four. Well, that's because these three servants coming up are like the undisputed kings and queens of this entire year. It was difficult to rate them, but I have done my best to do so. So let's start with the first of these big three. I cannot wait for Morgan Le Fay, even just on a character level. But on an ability level, she is one of the strongest berserkers ever released. Her charisma skill increases the party's attack and also charges her noble phantasm gauge while reducing the enemy's defense. It is a buff and a debuff all in one. She has a party NP gain rate buff that also charges one ally's NP gauge. You'll likely be targeting Morgan Le Fay with this, if anything else. And her guts ensures that she will not go down easily despite being made of paper. Her guts revives her, increases critical star absorption, increases critical damage, Damage, grants her a form of regeneration and also grants critical stars. So if the enemy attempts to murder her, she does have one final hurrah that is just absolutely devastating. Her Noble Phantasm Roadless Camelot is the premier buster farming Noble Phantasm, dealing incredible damage to all enemies while also dealing extra damage to enemies with the man attribute of which there are many. And this also has an overcharge for the entire party's Noble Phantasm list on demand. So you're able to go ahead and buff your entire team, but it is mainly the damage that leads to people gravitating towards this Noble Phantasm. You might be wondering, Justin, Buster Farming, that doesn't exist. Well, how wrong you are with number two. <laughs> Koyana Mana Chihuahua of Light has shown us that Red Card can once again indeed go burr. Koyanskaya makes Buster farming possible, and her skills are incredible boosts on basically, basically anything. She's got a 50% ally NP charge that reduces skill cooldown. She's got the ability to increase an ally's damage with her second skill against human enemies, man attribute enemies, and on attack activate buff, 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 whatever. Who cares? Most importantly, that on attack activate buff, you might think it's just something lame. No, it allows your ally to charge their noble phantasm gauge with their buster cards. The main thing that hurts buster cards is completely erased thanks to Koyan Skaya's second skill. And her third skill, well, it's just a huge, huge buster increase. Her noble phantasm isn't even necessarily that big of a deal. You probably won't be using 
it. But if you do, it is an AoE damage noble phantasm, increases Koyan Sky's attack, reduces the enemy's NP charge, and charges your party's noble phantasm gauge to boot. Koyanskaya makes Buster farming possible, and for a lot of players of the game, she is basically going to be a must pull this upcoming year so they can finally refield their Buster servants who have been filling the bench. Now, why isn't Koyanskaya number one if she's able to enable this brand new strategy? Well, one, Merlin is just generally better on challenge quests when it comes to helping with survivability. And of course, this last servant, I'm pretty sure you all know who it is, is absolutely absurd and is honestly good wherever you place him. God, that that may be my favorite noble phantasm in the entire game. I'm sure a lot of you thought it was a toss up between Koyanskaya of Light and Oberon, but Oberon's oppressive presence is just what led to me having to put him at the top of the list. And there are several reasons for me to justify that to you right now. Uh, his abilities are massive, massive boosts to the party. Noble phantasm damage, charging a party's NP gauge, on two separate skills, who'd have thunk that was possible? And also his ability to give a party member one last hurrah to try to murder the enemy with their noble phantasm. It is fairly effective if it's a buster noble phantasm, but really because the noble phantasm damage boost on Oberon's skill, increases up to 100%, this works on basically anybody. Now, the person you cast this on is absolutely useless afterwards as they are put to sleep for an eternity, but that is a small price to pay for some crazy Oberon damage. Oberon's Noble Phantasm isn't half bad either. Hitting all enemies, making them go to sleep, inflicting invincibility on one turn for them the following turn, but that gives you a little bit of an extra chance to catch up. It's it's strange, it's different, but I've got to say I kind of like it, especially considering you can use that turn to charge up some other stuff. Oberon is also the very first servant to show up in the Pretender class, and this class gives us an ability to deal with alter egos as well as the knight classes, the sabers, the archers, and the lancers. Oberon's absolutely impressive skill set, Oberon's brand new class that is granted to us, and Oberon's ability to make an ally give one of the most impressive final noble phantasm attacks you will ever see in this game made me have to, have to place Oberon in number one. But of course, I want to know what you all think, so let me know who you think is the best servant coming out from the five-star category in this upcoming year. I'm sure some people might take issue with the way I've ordered some things. Go ahead and let me know who you think is the strongest, but also let me know down below who you think is the best servant from a writing standpoint. Which servant you would like to have added to your team uh, from the five stars, of course, based on their personality. I'm excited to see who you all pick. For me, it is actually both Tai Gong Wong and Oberon. I absolutely adore both of them as characters from the way they end up playing in the story, and I am excited to get either of them on my team. Morgan Le Fay, of course, needs to be in there as well, but that's just, that's an easy pick for a lot of people. Uh, of course, I've got links down below to my Discord Discord server if you want to come and chat FGO. We do have an FGO JP section there where you can discuss any and all of these characters in detail. Thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon, subscribers and followers on Twitch, and of course all of you here on YouTube. It is your support that leads to me wanting to continue to make these videos, and I really, really appreciate it. Anyways gang, that's it for me, Kawaii 50 I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next video.